the final member from Team Friends to defend Friends, Kevin Townley. so much for enduring that lacrimose trip through the memory of a man you don't know. It was a lot like watching an old episode of Little House on the Prairie, but without the charming characterizations or lively dialogue. One could only hope that, had she kept her dress down from over her head, he may never have been born. settle for what life gives you, and that's how families are made. <laughs> I'd like to talk a little bit about family and friends. Now, I would like to mention that my father is an alchemist. <laughs> Elna didn't pull any punches. She was absolutely correct in that assessment. That was my dad. I never asked to be born. <laughs> and I think Liz brought up some very cogent points about othering, because coming from a Mormon family, Elna's family is always first to all of her members of her family. In fact, I was friends with her mother on Facebook until I took umbrage with some homophobic comments she made, and she unfriended me. <laughs> There's an old saying, you can pick your friends and you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your friends' noses. While this is true, my grandmother took it upon herself to pick my nose repeatedly <laughs> in public with her Lee Press on nails. Friends share common interests. <laughs> Whereas family are some group of random people you're, that are foisted upon you without any what, say so at all whatsoever. But now I, I ask you, and I'm, you know, I'm actually gonna, Elna reminded me of a story about when you can count on friends and when you can count on family. She had had a little bit of surgery and was in a great deal of pain. And I went over to her house to care for her and give her moral support. And her two sisters, uh, Julia and Tina were there, or maybe it was Jill. Jill and Tina were there and Elna had to take a pain medication. But the only way you could take this pain medication, well, it was a suppository. <laughs> And she was in too much pain to administer it herself, so she, we, <laughs> I, me and her two sisters all looked at each other, and they were like, I don't do this. And I said, well, I see my share of bubbles. It turns out that not only do you not get to choose your family, but there's new research that shows that you, the experiences of your ancestors affect your genetic code. So the traumas of your grandparents and uh, their, their parents and so on 
actually change the shape of one's DNA and that you inherit not only one's cleft palate or blue eyes or what have you, you also inherit one's uh, inability to hold on to money or hold lasting meaningful relationships. Yes. For example, <laughs> my grandmother on my mother's side was a showgirl. Oh, oh boy. She was a showgirl, which I completely blame her for my decision to get up in front of you this evening. My grandfa her husband worked for the FBI and stole his supervisor's paycheck. Because if you can get away with it anywhere, it's at the FBI. <laughs> um, and the parents are always talking about, like, don't choose your friends. Your friends can be a terrible influence on you. They're always concerned about the influence. What about the influence of our parents on us? In fact, I just spoke to my mother the other day, and I asked her, how are you doing, Mom? She's like, well, I'm upset with my friend Janine. And I said, well, what's going on? She's like, and I was like, well, who's Janine? And she's like, well, she's my friend from my anxiety support group. And like, she is not supposed to be eating unhealthy food. She's all, I try to bring, when I visit her, I try to bring over some healthy food for her to eat to be a good influence on her, but all she wants is cake. She'll only eat cake. And so, so I, I tried to bring some broccoli and she only ate cake and I said, you shouldn't have that. And that upset her and so she had a beer, which of course set her off. And then she shouldn't also be drinking beer because she's in the program. And so then she went on a total bender and went to a bad part of Sarasota where she met some black men that she brought back to her mother's house and they had sex with her on her mother's sofa and stole her mother's checkbook. <laughs> Janine. Mom! How would you feel if I was hanging out with people like that? Well, I wouldn't like it. So she has absolutely no legs to stand. Oh, I mean, she does have legs. You know what I mean. So, the other good thing about friends is they actually know what you want for Christmas. <laughs> A real friend would buy me the Murder, She Wrote complete series, or I, Claudius, or a signed photograph of Isabelle Huppert, or the My Little Pony Wonder Woman. <laughs> Family does not know what you want. They only know what they think you should want based on their ancient projections of you, which is basically like how they wish they were when that they were your age. So my mom, bought me a pair of hideous green pants from the Delia's catalog. And now I get the Delia's catalog every quarter to remind me that my youth has passed me by. And then even when you try to do something good for your family, it always winds up blowing up in your face. My mother had a birthday recently and I asked her, what would you like? She's like, it's silly. I was like, no, 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 you can tell me what you want. Well. You don't have to buy it. You'll probably think it's weird. I was like, Mom, trust me. I won't, I won't think it's weird. She's like, well, there's this religious program that I like. I was like, yeah. <laughs> well, there's just this CD that I like to listen to. I'd like to listen to the talks again because it makes me feel good about myself. I was like, all right, well, what's it called? She's like, it's called It's Supernatural with Sid Roth. <laughs> a messianic Jew. So I bought her the CD and now I get fucking spam mail from Sid Roth and Supernatural all the time. I'm an unwitting subscriber now to Miss Booker. I'm not Jewish. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I was re recently warned about the blood moons. Could it be God's final wake up call? A blood moon is another name for a total, I mean, it goes on to say, you know, blood moons coming to the world. Are they supernatural occurrence or a common event? I guess they're common, actually. <laughs> I mean, they're not so common that they're boring, but they do happen uh, every year. There is quite often a tetrad of blood moons. It's not an uncommon thing. It happens every 
15 to 20 years, and the fact that a blood moon should fall on Passover is not at all surprising, considering Passover always happens on a full moon. But my mom doesn't know that because she's actually not Jewish. <laughs> all these Jews. <laughs> Miami Beach. <laughs> this is a photo of Sid Roth reaching out to people in Miami Beach. So ladies and gentlemen, with that, I leave you. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and your patience. Good night.